Now it's recording. Uh, you can leave it as a fraction for sure. I'd, I'd rather see negative nine halves than negative 4.5 like any day. Okay. All right. So now let's look at the, the next one. Um, if I plug in negative five, you'll, you'll get zero over zero again. Otherwise, this would be kind of trivial. Um, so we'll take, so we'll use L'Hopital's rule again, basically. Okay, so what is the derivative of the numerator? Mm -hmm. 4x plus 10, good. And the denominator? Just 2x, exactly. Okay, perfect. So, so now this is, this is pretty straightforward. Now we can really just kind of plug in negative 5. And you get uh, 4 times negative 5 plus 10 divided by 2 times negative 5. So the numerator is negative 20 plus 10, which is negative 10. The denominator is also negative 10. So you end up getting just 1. Okay, so without L'Hopital's rule, you could you could factor, and then both of these would probably have a factor of x. They'll both have a factor of x plus five, which you could cancel out. So it might be quicker to do it that way. Um, but since we're demonstrating L'Hopital's rule, we did it this way. Okay, any questions? Thank you for the response. Uh, so okay, so so these are we've looked at zero over zero, and if these were these had they were both zero over zero, but if they'd been infinity over infinity, it would work out the same way, All right? So now we're going to look at a few other types of indeterminate forms. Uh, the next one will be zero times infinity. Okay, the key to these is that multi multiplying by something is the same thing as dividing by the reciprocal. Okay, so what I mean by that is in concrete terms, like 2 times 5 is the same thing as 5 divided by 1 half. Okay, so I can rewrite, so if I have a product, I can rewrite them as a fraction by dividing by the reciprocal of one of the terms, right? And then maybe I'll get, rather than 0 times infinity, I'll get 0 over 0 or infinity times infinity. Okay, so let's look at the first one. Uh, what is the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of the natural log of x? So we, we sort of did, I mean, we did a lot, of, a lot of these types of problems in the discussion yesterday. That's okay. Um, just to remind you how to evaluate the limit as x approaches 0 from the right for the natural log, one way to think about that is to look at the, look at the graph of the natural log. Okay, so recall that the natural log has a vertical asymptote at zero, and its, its domain is only for positive values, All right? So based on this graph, what is the limit as 
x approaches zero from the right for the natural log. Uh huh. It's negative infinity, right? Looking at this graph, if I approach, if I approach zero from the right, oh, I have no idea what happened. I rotated it. If I approach zero from the right, my graph goes off to negative infinity. Okay, so that means that this looks like, well, now if I now if I look at this term, if I plug in zero, the x cubed term certainly goes to zero, and the natural log term goes to negative infinity. Okay, so it looks like zero times infinity with, with a negative, but that doesn't really matter. All right, so the way, we, the way we deal with this is to move one of the terms in the denominator by dividing by its reciprocal. So you'll generally want to use, um, I would say, the simpler term. So x cubed to me is a, is a simpler term than the natural log of x. All right. So I can rewrite this limit, or I can rewrite this expression as the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of ln of x divided by 1 over x cubed. So these are the same expression. Okay, now if I let x go to in, x go to zero from the right, as we've seen, the numerator ln x goes to negative infinity. Now the denominator, if I'm if I'm taking the denominator to be the full one over x cubed term, and I let x go to zero from the right, that will go to positive infinity. So this this now takes the indeterminate form, negative infinity over infinity. Okay, the question on the right. Uh, it was written as a product, technically at zero times infinity. That's kind of trivial to turn into a fraction. Um, you just write it as e to the x over x. And now if you let x go to infinity for this right one, you also get infinity over infinity. Okay, so I'm going to try now to, yeah, sign does like, yeah, like infinity over negative infinity or, or any plusers and minuses on the infinities. Don't, like it's still, it's still an indeterminate form and you can still use L'Hopital's rule. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I'm going to try to split y'all into groups, and I want y'all to work on these two problems now. So now they're now they're in the right form for you to apply L'Hopital's rule. Okay, so there's 55 people. Okay, so I'm going to break y'all into groups, and I want y'all to touch these problems.
Okay, so let's get back together on these. Um, in the first case, so this x cubed times the natural log, um, we end up getting in negative infinity over infinity, so we can apply L'Hopital's rule. Uh, how do I say? Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, so the what is the derivative of ln of x? Good, 1 over x. Thank you. What is the derivative of 1 over x cubed? Good, negative 3 over x to the fourth. That's, that's right. And you can get that by uh, whoops, using the power rule. So 1 over x cubed, you can think about as x to the negative third power. And then when you take the derivative using the power rule, you get negative 3x to the negative fourth, which is negative 3 divided by x to the fourth. OK, so this ends up being the same thing as the limit as x approaches 0 from the right. So really, if you plug 0 in, uh, you'd get something like infinity over infinity again. But if you just kept taking derivatives, um, you wouldn't really get anywhere. Like the, the denominators would just keep going up in power. You'd get, you'd get uh, negative 1 over x squared divided by negative, divided by 12 over x to the fifth, and you get infinity over infinity again, and you could do that forever. Um, or you could just simplify this as a fraction, and this is the same thing as x cubed over negative 3. So that comes from just, if I'm dividing two fractions like I'm doing here, the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So now you um, now you can just plug in 0. So x cubed just goes to 0, and the denominator is just a constant. So this is just 0. OK? For um, the second one, e to the x over x, this one's really quick. You get infinity over infinity. Um, so you can use L'Hopital's rule. And then what is the derivative of e to the x? Just e to the x, good. And the derivative of x is just 1. So now when I let x go to infinity, the only term that's left is e to the x. And if I let the exponent get big, uh, e to the x will get really, really big. So this just goes to infinity. All right, so a couple more. Um, things are going a little slow, so I'm going to try to speed things up a bit. Um, let's see. If you see you're getting stuck in a loop, yeah, there's, there's, uh, there, there must be something else you can do, basically. So, I mean, multiply the, by the reciprocal. You, you can do that in this case. It may not be any case. Um, but there, yeah, there's got to be some, basically, algebraic way to simplify it. <laughs> All right, so now let's look at. Um, this next one, the limit as x approaches pi over 2 from the left of secant minus tangent. OK, so pi over 2 is the the top of the circle and if i approach it from the left that means i'm i'm like approaching it from um the counterclockwise direction okay if you think about pi over two on a number line if i'm approaching it from the left i'm approaching it from angles that are smaller than pi over two okay so in this case um both secant and tangent go to infinity so this looks like infinity minus infinity. All right, and this is another indeterminate form, basically. All right, so what can we do in this case? Sometimes you can try to factor things out. 
um, or if they're both fractions to begin with, you can try to write them as a single fraction over a common denominator. So then maybe then maybe you can get something like zero over zero or infinity over infinity. So that's what we'll do here. Uh, we'll rewrite secant and tangent in terms of their in terms of sine and cosine, so that they're both fractions. So this is the limit as x approaches pi over two from the left. Secant is one over cosine. Tangent is sine over cosine. Okay, so I actually already have a common denominator, don't I? I have cosine of x, like they both have cosine in the denominator already. So adding these together as fractions is simple. You just like add the numerators together, or in this case, take the difference. So this is the same thing as one minus sine x over cosine x. All right, and recall that, so now if I try to plug in pi over two, Recall that sine of pi over 2 is 1 and cosine of pi over 2 is 0. So this looks like 0 over 0. Okay, so we have this indeterminate form. We just combined it into a single fraction, and now it looks like 0 over 0. All right, so now we can use L'Hopital's rule. Okay, so what is the derivative of one minus sine of x? Good, negative cosine. Okay, and the derivative of cosine of x? Good, negative sine. So this is really the limit as x approaches pi over 2 from the left of cotangent. OK, or, or you could just plug in pi over 2 into the cosine over sine. Since cosine of pi over 2 is 0, and sine of pi over 2 is 1, this just looks like 0 over 1, which, which is just 0, or cotangent of pi over 2, which is just 0. OK, so we started with the form infinity minus infinity, and we just combined it. We took the terms and combined them into a single fraction so that we got 0 over 0. Okay, any questions on that before we move to the last couple problems? Nope. All right, so the, the forms that we've dealt with now thus far are 0 over 0, infinity over infinity, 0 times infinity, and infinity minus infinity. Okay. Uh, 0 over 0 and infinity over infinity, those are where you can immediately apply L'Hopital's rule. Uh, 0 times infinity and infinity minus infinity, you, you may have to do something else. But the, the idea is to ultimately get everything to look like this, one of these two things. All right. There are other indeterminate forms, 1 to the infinity, 0 to the 0, uh, infinity to the 0. And it should really be 0 to the infinity as well. Um, so these are also indeterminate forms. And you evaluate these using logarithms, or you, you work with these using logarithms. Basically the same, it's the same steps we did with um, logarithmic differentiation. Okay, so the first example is the limit. We're looking at the limit as x approaches 0 of x, and then the exponent is x squared. Okay, so this looks like 0 to the 0th power. 
all right, which is an indeterminate form. Generally something that's zero power is one, but we're, we're not so confident saying that uh, when the base is zero. Okay, so we'll, we'll approach this by trying to, trying to put it into one of these forms using um, the natural log, all right? We use the natural log because it lets us bring the exponent out front, all right? So we, we have this limit that we're trying to evaluate. We just call it L just to name it something. Um, and then we apply the natural log to both sides, just like what we, just like what we did with logarithmic differentiation, all right? So what I can do here is I can move the x squared out front. So this becomes the limit as x approaches 0 from the right. I can move the x squared out front according to the rules for logarithms. And I have x squared times ln x, right? Now if I plug in 0, or if I let uh, x approach 0 from the right, this looks like 0 times negative infinity okay and really it looks just like almost just like this problem that we did earlier okay so we'll do it the same way uh, if i have zero times infinity i want to move one of the terms into the denominator as the reciprocal Okay, so I move the x squared into the denominator by, rather than multiplying by x squared, I divide by 1 over x squared. All right, and I get negative infinity over infinity. Okay, so now I can use L'Hopital's rule, and it, it basically works out the exact same way as the problem we did earlier. So the derivative of ln x, as you said before, was 1 over x. The derivative of 1 over x squared, if you use the power rule, will give you negative 2 over x cubed. And this is, if you simplify this, you get x squared over negative 2. All right, and then if I plug in 0, I get 0. Okay, so we, we've sort of solved something. Uh, we actually haven't finished the problem. What, we've, what we found to be zero is this term. So we found out that the natural log of L is zero, where L is just the original limit that we're trying to solve. Okay, so if the natural log of L is zero, we wanna, we wanna solve for L, which means you sort of take E raised to both sides of the equation e and the natural log are inverses, so the left-hand side just becomes L, and the right-hand side is e to the 0, and this is the same thing as 1. Yeah, so this would be a common, yeah, so as Howard says, this would be a very common mistake, would be, okay, like I, I do my limit, I get to the end, I get a nice number like 0, and I think, okay, I'm done, All right? But you, you've altered, you altered the equation to begin with. You, you took the natural log of both sides. So you have to undo that step at the end. Okay, so let's do uh, one more example. Uh, generally, I'd, I'd have y'all, but we're kind of running out of time, and I want to do at least a couple examples of this. So in this case, if I if I have, I have this limit as x approaches zero of one plus four x to the three over x, if I plug zero into that, it looks like one plus zero to the three over zero, which I sort of think about as one to the infinite power. So this is another indeterminate form. Whenever you have one of one of these types, like zero to infinity, one to infinity, uh, infinity to the zero. You can deal with that by taking the natural log, all right? So just for like the sake of notation, it's helpful to just whatever your limit is to just call it something. So we'll say L equals this thing, and then I'll take the natural log of both sides.
Okay, when you take the natural log of the expression involving the limit, you can move the three over x term out front. And then you're left with the natural log of one plus four x. Okay, and this you can easily write now as a fraction. You get um, three ln one plus four x divided by x. Okay, now if I let x go to zero, this looks like the natural log of one over zero. And recall that the natural log of one is zero. So this is actually zero over zero. All right, so we can use L'Hopital's rule. All right, so what is the derivative of the denominator? Just one, good. So that's really simple, it just goes away. Um, the derivative of the numerator, so I'll have this, this three out there basically out front. Remember that when I take the derivative of a natural log, I just take one divided by the argument basically. So I have one divided by whatever's inside of the natural log, which in this case is one plus four X. Okay. And then I need to multiply by something. So what do I need to multiply by at the end here? Four, right? And that comes exactly from the chain rule. You have to take the derivative um, of the one plus four X term, which is four, All right? So this is the limit as X approaches zero of 12 over one plus four X. Yep. So now what do I get when I plug in zero? Just 12. Okay, but remember we're not we're not done yet. 12 is the natural log of L, not the actual limit that we wanted to find in the first place. So we've actually found out that the natural log of L is 12. But then, then solving for L is easy. It's just E. Yes, it's just E to the 12th. So L is E to the 12th power. OK, so this limit you can solve, and it's E to the 12th. All right. OK, so that's that's all for today. Um, have a good weekend. Uh, stay safe. Uh, let me know if you have any other questions. Spicy indeed. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Oh, yeah, I can maybe show the cat. Let's see. How do I stop sharing this? Amy. She's not into it. <laughs> yeah, the cat guest lecture on Monday. Uh, module one <laughs> will include um, techniques on differentiation. So, so I'll, I'll talk more about that on Monday. Hmm, that is a good idea. Head moderator. Module one is next Friday. 
It will be open from 5 p.m. next Friday till midnight on Saturday. Okay, thanks, you too.